All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Charlie Craven, and today I'm going to tie you a fly that I feel like I may have already done a video for, um, but I'm old and I can't remember if I did or not. But at any rate, I'm going to do it again, and hopefully this is better than the last one. Uh, this is a fly that I've been been fishing a fair amount lately. Uh, it's September, and uh, I've been fishing a lot of terrestrial stuff, and beetles are one of my favorite terrestrials. Um, and this is just kind of a, a regular old-school foam beetle. Um, nothing fancy about this one. Um, and, you know, I'll tell you, my, my secret to a foam beetle, um, at least fishing them, is to fish them pretty big. Um, I'm going to tell you a size 12 today. Uh, but a 10 or a 12 is, is none too big, you know. Um, if you kind of pay attention when you're walking to and from the river, um, you'll see beetles in the, in the grass. And, uh, very often they're, they're pretty stout. Um, you know, those big mountain bugs are, are bigger than what you find in your yard, typically. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to twist you up this little foam beetle. And, uh, um, this version, um, really is, is a Mike Lawson foam beetle. Um, but it's sort of the derivative that, uh, I got from my old friend Frank Prasnick, um, back when he owned St. Peter's Fly Shop. Um, and he, he showed me this variation of it and, uh, just a few little details that we're, we're going to kind of play with along the way. So I'm going to start with a Tiemco 100 SPBL. Um, and again, this is a size 12. And I'm going to take some ADOT Unithread. For those of you that like the visual, take some ADOT Unithread. I'm going to start it right behind the eye. And I'm going to make a thread base all the way back to the bend and then some. So when I get to the bend of the hook here, what I want to do is actually come down around the bend a bit. And then come all the way forward again. You can kind of just cross hatch or spiral wrap as you as you come forward. You just want a nice even thread base there on the hook shank. Now I've got a piece of uh, fly foam and this is the open cell stuff. Um, I think 1 8 inch is what they what they call this. It's about uh, I'm gonna say 3 millimeters. Uh, the open cell stuff does float better. Um, it doesn't shape as well as not quite as durable as, as thin fly foam but it does float better. So um, I've got a piece of, of black and I've cut it. Let's see put it on this side. Um, just a bit, it's kind of the outside dimensions of the hook, so um, if I hold this just right for you, um, you can see it's kind of the outside of the of the hook shank on top and the outside of the hook point on the bottom, so just slightly wider than the gap of the hook. Um, then I'm going to take some, some Zappa Gap, and I'm going to put a little bead up and down the shank and kind of smear that around. I'm going to take my piece of foam, and I kind of use that to smear the glue. I'll bump my thread back just an eye length or two, and catch that foam on top of the hook. And then I'm just going to spiral wrap back over it, all the way down around the bend. The key to that is getting down around the bend of the hook there. Um, and what that does is it helps to uh, set the hook a little lower in the fly and makes it land upright more often. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just cross hatch back and forth across that foam. But you can see that foam is tied well down around the bend. Um, it also gives the gives the fly a little bit more beetle shape rather than just kind of a block up on top. So now I'm going to tie in um, six or eight strands of nice bushy peacock curl. I might have eight or ten here. I'm going to cut their tips even. And I'm going to tie this in, oh, just past just past halfway. Um, and you can see I missed a couple of those strands there. I'll show you a trick. So if I if I go to tie these in, I tried to cut them all to the same length, but invariably, well, now I can't miss one. There, I'm going to make that one shorter. All right. So if I catch these, and I miss that one, I can pull these down to length and then buckle this one forward again and catch it with the next turn. Like so, uh, just a quick little little tip on how to tie in loose fibers like that. I'm going to wrap over those all the way to the bend. Then I'll bring my thread back up, and at this point I'm going to take four strands of black crystal flash. And you don't want them too long, a couple inches, and I'm going to tie these in. Um, I'm going to say these are at about 70%, 65, 70%, so not too close to the hook eye. And I'm going to tie them in with X wraps, so they're tied in like spinner wings, just spent on on top of the top of the hook shank there. 
and then I'll bump my thread down to my thread base there behind the eye. Now I'm going to take one little drop of zap and put it right on the base of those legs and you'll see why here in a, in a minute. And I'm going to pick up my peacock curls and I'm going to roll these, get my fingers out of the way, I'll wet my fingertips a bit and I'm going to roll these in my fingers to start to make a rope. And you don't want to start off too tight on those tips because you can pretty easily break the tips. But I'm going to start to wrap this coil of peacock and it, I find it does help to, to wet your fingers a bit. Right up to the back of the legs and then right in front of the legs. So I didn't figure eight or anything, just went one side of the legs, other side of the legs. Right up to my tie off point behind the eye and I'll tie that peacock off with several tight turns that are all behind the material. Notice that's behind. Um, putting anything in front doesn't do anything. And trim those off and now I can cover those butt ends. Those wraps in front actually do cover up those butt ends. So now what I want to do while that glue is wet is I want to kind of spread these legs out a bit um, and I just kind of star them out. You know just kind of pull two forward and two back um, and what that'll do it's kind of help to spread those legs, but it lets the glue hold the base of those in place. So now I'm going to take my piece of foam up over the top, and I'm really not going to stretch it, just a tiny little bit. And you can see how I'm pinching it here around the hook eye with my material hand. I'm going to bring my thread up and around and then tighten toward me, just nice and even. Three or four turns to anchor that down. Now you can you can cut this off and whip finish right now and uh, you know, have a have a damn good beetle. The problem is, is this thing's really hard to see. Um, so what I've got here is a piece of pink or orange or white razor foam. Um, you know, whatever color you can see best. Um, and what you want to do with this is I'm going to lay this in on top. Now, I've tied lots of these, so I know that when I go to tie this in, if I set it square, my thread's going to tweak it and, and I'll turn this so you can see it. We'll tweak it so it's just slightly crooked. Doesn't make any difference to the fish, but it bugs the hell out of me. Uh, so, because I know it's going to tweak, I'm going to tilt it just slightly back toward me. So let me give you that angle. Um, so you can see I'm not tying that in straight. I'm going to tweak it just a bit. And then let my thread pull down. And straighten that right up on top. Pro tip. Alright, now, here's another pro tip. Um, I'm not just going to whip finish. I'm going to lift this piece of foam up and I'm going to build a thread head up here. Um, and what this does is lifts this, this little stub that we're going to leave up off the eye of the hook so it makes the fly much easier to thread. See there's a little space there? Um, if you don't do that, that piece of foam is right down flat against the eye of the hook and it's damn near impossible to, to find um, you know, when you're out fishing. Um, so that just gives you a little bit more room. So then I'll come in and whip finish. Just pull that foam out of the way. Whip finish behind the eye there. Come in and trim my thread out. And I'm going to trim that that black foam just beyond beyond the eye of the hook. And my pink foam, I like to leave it a little long. Cut that into just a short little stub. And then for my legs, kind of get them where I want them here. And I like to have you know I like to have them pretty widespread, like so. And then I'm going to come in, I'm going to leave the back ones a little long, and then I can kind of trim the front ones just in that same radius. Like so. So you've got some creepy little beetle legs. Um, this is a good fly. This is a simple little fly. Um, I'll show you the piece that, uh, that Frank turned me on to. Um, you can see how you've got some ridges here on the edges of this foam. What Frank does is he comes in with his scissors and knocks that corner off. And that just rounds the shell out a bit more. And that, uh, Frank actually told me the piece about bringing it down around the bend of the hook as well. But knocking that corner off that foam makes the shell a little more round. Um, and in, uh, in practice has been, you know, 9 to 11% more, more trout. So, um, if you're looking to, to up your game, to level up, um, knock that off. Then you'll then you'll have more fish. Uh, so there we are. That's my first fly of the morning. Uh, that's a foam beetle, uh, Mike Lawson slash Frank Prasnick version. And uh, 
you should tie some of those up. You should always have those in your box during the summer. Um, even if you just throw a couple, um, you know, I actually even have a couple of beetles in my nymph box just because, um, you know, every now and again you find a fish in a weird spot or a fish that's being super picky. Um, or you're just covering water. A lot of times I'll nymph fish my way downstream. Um, and as I turn around to come back up, I'll put on a beetle and just cover water. Um, I do that kind of thing a lot. Um, so it's good to have one in there. And uh, this is a good one for it to be. So twist some of those up. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, I'm Charlie Craven. And uh, uh, for those of you that don't know, I do own Charlie's Fly Box. So it's a fly shop in Arvada, Colorado. And uh, if you need any of these materials, everything I think is linked in the... Uh, uh, in the description and uh, you can you can buy any of the materials you want from me uh, which I'd appreciate um, but yeah apparently that wasn't clear so I just wanted to clear that up for you you guys thanks for watching I'll be back with some more here shortly take care